I hope you guys have enjoyed the series that we've been going through. The series called Get and Stuck. Get and Stuck. We've been going through this series since January. And to, next Sunday, we are actually finishing this series. We are coming to the end of Getting and Stuck. And we are getting into Singles Rule. Okay? Singles Rule. So today is the second last week that we are doing and Stuck. I don't know if you have been like me, but my prayer through all this series, my question, the question that I've been struggling with through all this series is this question. Lord, am I stuck? Am I stuck? Because it looks like life is going on as normal as usual, but maybe I am stuck somewhere. Maybe I am stuck in my relationships. Maybe I am stuck in my finances. Maybe I am stuck in the way I do my things. Maybe I am stuck in my career. Lord, am I stuck? And I want to challenge you this morning to ask yourself this question and ask God, am I stuck? The next question that I've been asking, what do I need to do to get unstuck? Because I believe that it is God who engineered this sermon series for us this, uh, this last couple of weeks. For us to actually come to the place and say, God, I am stuck. But how do I get unstuck? How do I move from this point that I am on right now to the next point? So in the first week, we spoke about isolated living. Let me just give you a background of unstuck if you're here for the first time. The first week, we spoke about isolated living. And this is the place where we challenged you to come from isolation, to move into a space where you actually have a community around you. This is the day we challenge you to join our small groups, which we call our e-groups. And if you haven't already, please sign up after, after the service, because this is a place where you will grow. You will meet people who are like-minded, who you will meet people who also want to grow just as you want to grow. You will meet people who are not perfect. You will realize that the person seated next to you actually has more issues than you do and that you have a solution for them. So we called you out of isolated living. The next week we spoke about distorted thinking. And God invited us to replace our fear with faith. Our fear, the things that we've been fearing so much. God invited us to start walking in faith. The following week, we moved into impaired hearing. And I, I know you remember this, where we spoke about how God is not in the thunder. You remember? And God is not in the fire. And God is not in the wind. But God spoke in a still small voice. The next week, uh, we spoke about the God storyboard. And I know you guys remember the storyboard where we spoke about God's story and your story. And I don't know what your story is. I don't know if you've been working towards making God's story your story. I don't know what has been said about you in the past and what God has said about you. I don't know if you know these things. But there is a story that God has for you that you need to grab and run with today. Last week, we spoke about neglected issues. And some of us have these things that we've been running from. Just like Elijah was running away from Jezebel and God asked him to go back the way he came to face his issues head on. And God called us to go back to those things that we've been hiding somewhere. Those things that we've been putting somewhere and just not wanting to remember forgetting about just wanting to forget about them god called us to open up those things to him so that he can deal with them and so today we are on week number six and we are talking about rediscovering your boundaries we are talking about rediscovering your boundaries now let me tell you this some of you are stuck because you do not have boundaries in your life some of you are stuck because there are no boundaries that govern your relationships. Some of you are stuck because there are no boundaries that govern the way you live uh, your daily life. As you may know, uh, the Salmon series and Stuck is from a book uh, called Unstuck by a guy called Mark Job. And in that book, this guy gives a story about he, how he was a football coach. He was an assistant coach uh, to his son's soccer team. Okay, I don't know if there's anyone here who's a coach. 
Okay? I know there are a few guys who are very good coaches. Okay, watch match. And you're seated there and you're like, I'm see Patia Yule, you know. There are guys who are coaches, but this guy was uh, this guy was actually a real coach to his son's football team. Okay? And one day he was an assistant coach. One day the head coach was not there. And so he stepped in. You know, as an assistant coach, you can meet, miss some matches. You don't have to come to all the practices. You only show up when the head coach is not there. And so this guy shows up in this day and his kids, his son is playing and all these other boys are ready and they have this amazing gear and they are ready to play soccer that morning. And so the other team is also there and they are ready. And the time comes and the, 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 the match is just about to begin, to begin and, the, and, the, and the referee blows the whistle. Now, of course, this guy knows that these guys have been playing for a while now and so they know what uh, is to be done. But lo and behold, when the whistle blew, okay, and every boy in the pitch ran towards the ball, ran towards the, the, the ball. When it was going on this side, nobody kept their, kept their position. They all ran towards the ball. In fact, even the goalkeeper wanted to run after the ball and leave his position. And so this guy was, what is going on? I thought you guys have been playing football for a while. But the kids had no idea how to keep their positions. They had no idea how to keep their boundaries. And so they ran all over the place. They were on this side. They were on that side. And when it got to halftime, this guy had it. And he called the, 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 the boys and told them, guys, we spoke about boundaries. We spoke about position. We know that you are the striker. And you are the midfield. And you are the defender. And you with the gloves are the goalkeeper. You're not supposed to move out of this space. And so these guys were explained to what their roles is. They were explained to what positions they are supposed to play. They were explained to what boundaries they are supposed to keep when playing football. Now, if you're a football fan like I am, you know that you know when teams lose, it's because there are people who never kept their boundaries. There are people who played lower than expected, and that's why the team lost that day. Okay, and so when these young men went back to the pitch, keeping their boundaries, observing everything that they had been told, they actually won that match. Some of you, you are on this race of life. You are on this race and you're not keeping your position. You do not know the boundaries that are around you. You do not know where you're supposed to be playing. You do not know which position you are supposed to be playing. You are just running around, trying to do everything. You are running on this side. When you hear this is happening on that side, when you hear this is happening, you go to that side. I came to let you know that you cannot play the whole field. You cannot do everything. Elijah was a great man. In fact, the name Elijah meant my god is yahweh so elijah was actually a really you know since he was born he was set apart to do great things for god elijah is the guy who said hey it is not going to rain for the next few years until i say so so we are not just talking about any other prophet of god we are talking about this guy who had the power to say hey it's not going to rain for the next couple of years until I say so. Wouldn't that be great? If you can just stand and command things. Hey, there's no going to be traffic this morning until I get to the office. You know those things that you just wish you could pull? You know those things. Hey, it's not going to, you know, my bank account is not going to run dry until January ends. Or the year ends. You know those things. And Elijah could pull one of those things. And he pulled a heavy one. That involved the skies. He pulled something that was awesome. That involved the heavens. And he said, you know what? It's not going to rain. I'm just trying to show you that Elijah was not just any other prophet. Elijah was fed by ravens. You know? Ravens. Imagine you're somewhere in a desert... And there are birds that are sent to you to feed you. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be so great. And it was not just that he bread alone. He was fed bread and meat. This guy was fed burgers for like 40 days. And you know, it was so awesome. This guy had the brook providing, you know, water for him. And he had bread and meat every single day. 
you know those days i don't think atiku kona story a diet so it was just anything that you can actually have and elijah god provided for him these things elijah is the one who prophesied to the widow of zarephath you guys know this widow who had this son and was saying hey there's nothing to eat i just have this to eat and die ni 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 and elijah asked him hey come on bring those things to the man of god bring those things bring all the nini that you can find to the man of god and elijah prophesied on them and the widow had more than enough that ran and could not come to an end it was just overflowing overflowing so this is the guy we are talking about in fact elijah is this guy who when this widow's son died elijah says this this you know he didn't even do a lot he just went and slept on this boy juu yake tu like this akaji stretch three times and the boy came back to life so this is the kind of person we are talking about he's a guy who brought someone back to life The one that we read the other day is about how Elijah destroyed the prophets of Baal. You know? Destroyed these guys. The whole day they were there trying to bring fire to consume the sacrifice and nothing happened. And Elijah just by one word fire came down and consumed everything on that place. This is the guy we are talking about. Now I don't know about you. I don't know who you are, you know, in the eyes of God. But this is Elijah and this is the kind of CV that he has in the eyes of God. I don't know your CV in the presence of God, but this man found himself in a cave. He found himself unstuck with all these things. Now, I don't know about you, when I consider the life of Elijah, I know that I can actually be stuck somewhere. I can actually be stuck in a specific area of my life and really not know how to go about it. God came to Elijah and told Elijah, "Get out. Go back the way you came." Come on, let's read together. First Kings 19, we are in verse 15 today, verse 15 and 16. The Lord said to him, the Lord said to Elijah, "Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king of Aram also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king of Israel and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mehola to succeed you as prophet now here is what i want you to get from this passage elijah was depleted discouraged and tired when god got him out of the cave the first thing that god had him do was delegate some of the things that he was doing he had taken on himself things that three people could actually do elijah had taken himself things that god had not called him to do remember elijah was a prophet he was not all these other things that he had taken on himself in other words god told him i don't want you to do this I want somebody else to do this. I want somebody else to take this from your plate. Elijah was a spiritual leader, yet he had taken on himself the political role. He had taken the responsibility of the political side of both Judah and Israel. He had taken on something extra from what God had called him to do. I know you guys have had, you know, sometimes you have this urge to go into politics. You are not a politician. Okay let me just give a clean example that we all know of how men of God sometimes see that there is a need in the political sphere of let's say Kenya and they decide you know what see me I have my fans I have guys who know me I can also throw myself in that ballot and get elected and be a representative of people while I serve I mean you guys have you know these guys who've done that in the past what happened they never succeeded because sometimes just because there's a need does not mean that it is you to fulfill that need just because there's a need in a place to be filled the question is has god called you to fill that need now you see people running around and looking for power people running around in spaces where god has not called him and this is the place where elijah found himself and god told him i want you to anoint this man Elijah as you come out of your cave as you get unstuck I want you to anoint this man I want you to anoint this man and I want you to anoint this man 
These three men are going to take up the responsibilities that you have been dying with. Elijah set a plan in motion to narrow his call and rediscover his boundaries. There's a guy called Hen Henry Cloud. Now, Henry Cloud, if you're married, I'm sure you've read his books. He talks about boundaries in marriage, boundaries in parenting, boundaries in relationships. And he talks about a lot about boundaries. And in one of his books, he, say, he defines boundaries as a personal property line that marks those things for which we are responsible for. In other words, boundaries define who we are and who we are not. When you have a boundary, it is easy for, for you to know. When you engage in something, you know, I, that is not me. That is not me. Now, for example, I am not a worship leader. I am not. I might sometimes, if I stand here and I start singing, you will know that that guy does not sing much. So you will not see me trying to fit in a worship leader kind of shoes. There are people who you are not a singer. Okay, and I worship him are perfect by the way. They're amazing. I'm not saying this about them. There are some people there who might want to join the worship team. You might want to think twice. Okay, I'm saying this. You might want to do something. You are not good with teenagers. You know, auna zile mawads, teenagers on rakuskia. You're not in touch with uh, this generation. And yet, saizo, apondo mejie kamaze. Me, I'm called to the teenagers. You need to ask yourself, God, where have you called me? In which position have you called me? What are the boundaries that you have called me into? And this is going to help us. Boundaries tell us what is ours and what is not ours. Now, Steve Jobs, when asked how is it that Apple is so su successful, he simply said this. He had to say a thousand no's, a thousand no's to one yes. Steve Jobs. For Apple to be successful, he had to say a thousand no's just for one yes. And that is why Apple is what it is today. Because that man learned to say no. The question is, are you saying no? Or are you found everywhere? You see a need somewhere and you run into it. You see this somewhere and you run into it. You see there's this responsibilities in the family and you are the first one to rush there. You see that there is this that needs to be done and you're the first one to run there. Has God called you to all these things or are you just taking on things? Taking on things so that you can be seen you are busy. Are you just taking on responsibilities and roles? Just because somebody needs to fill those roles. Jesus himself said no. Jesus said no. A time came and Jesus would just say, you know guys, I am not called to this. A good example is this. When a time, when, the, when, when, when Jesus was the first miracle, just before it happened, the wedding thing, and Jesus is there and they're saying, Jesus, Jesus, man, we are out of wine. And Jesus said, my time has not yet come he said no if you read mark chapter 1 verse 32 let's just go there quickly mark 1 verse 32 i just want to show you where jesus actually said no some of us feel like when we say no we are hurting people when we say no what will they say about me when they when i say no hey bana they are not going to love me anymore when i say no this and this will happen jesus himself said no and so we are here mark 1 verse 32 and this is what says that evening after sunset the people brought to jesus all the sick and demon possessed the whole town gathered at the door and jesus healed many who had various diseases he also drove out many demons but he will not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Now very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, listen, let us go somewhere else. 
to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I came. All these guys were gathered and they were waiting for Jesus and they wanted Jesus to continue performing the miracles. And Jesus said, hey, 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 guys, that is not why I came. There are other reasons why I came. I came so that I can preach I came so that I can speak to other nations also. And Jesus told them, guys, let's get out of this place and go to a new place. Jesus learned to say no. Now, some of you, I mean, th there are many illustrations that I could use to just explain why you should start saying no. But this is just it. Before you say yes, I want you to ask yourself, has God called me to this? What is my calling? What are the boundaries of my calling? What can I say yes to and what can I say no to? Here's what I know about some of you. Some of you are caretakers. Some of you really love people. Some of you really want to make people happy. You have taken on responsibilities. You have taken, you've decided to manage and fix people's lives. You want to be Every time they fight, you want to be there for them. Every time they are going through a hard time, you want to be there. Every time something happens, you want to rush to the rescue. Has God called you to do some of these things? There are many people who are doing great things in this world that God never called them to do. They are doing great things, but those are not the things that God called them to do. God has called you to fulfill a few things. God has called you to do specific things and it's not everything. You need to know what are the boundaries of the things that I need to do in my life. Elijah almost lost his life in the cave. His mission, his joy. He lost it all because he had no boundaries of the things that he should and he shouldn't be doing in his life. You have to know what you're called into. Come on, turn to your neighbor and ask them, do you know your calling? Turn to the other one, ask them, do you know what you're called to? You have to know, you have to know, what are your weaknesses? What are my strengths? So that I will not say yes to this and I know, hey, I cannot handle that. You have to know, hey, there are things that I cannot handle and so I will not take up. You have to know that, hey, by the way, God, if you give me six children at once, hey! Eh? Strong. <laughs> there are things that you have to know. What can I handle? And what can't I handle? I want to ask you today, is there anything you need to give away today? Is there anything that you need to stop doing? Is there anything that you need to let somebody else handle that and you continue with your role? Is there anything you've been trying to control? You've been trying to make it work. Let me speak to the wives in this place. Maybe you've been trying to control your husband. You've been trying to control. And you're leaving hints all over the place that your husband might become something that maybe God has not called him to be. You are busy controlling things that you have no power over. And God is calling you to let these things go today. Some of you husbands, you want, to want your wife to start living this way. You want to be, them to behave this way. You want your girlfriends and your boyfriends to be something that they are not. You are controlling. You are taking God's position. You have to let go of these people. You have to let go of these things. As a pastor, I have to wrestle with what has God called me to? Has God called me to plant a church? Has God called me to go, you know, to, the, to, to, to preach to Muslims in Somalia? Has God called me to go to the communities in the villages to speak there? Has God called me to young people? Has God called me to children? Where has God called me? You can't be everything. You can't handle everything. You have to wrestle with what is it that God created me to do? You have to learn to say no. Point number two, you need to know your boundary so that you don't hold on to what you should be letting go of. You need to know your boundary so that you don't hold on to what you should be letting go of. 
when I am flowing in what God called me to do, when I am in that space where I am doing my calling, I am living my calling, my life thrives. You can just see this person is happy. This person is doing what God has called them to do. When you look around in Kenya, you see so many people who look so miserable every day. You see so many people who are living a life that God never called them to do. And so they walk around depleted. They walk around defeated. They walk around. They look like they are worn out every day. It's because they are not living their calling. They are not living in the boundaries of what they've been called to. They are trying this. They are trying this. They are trying this. A few years back, there was a lot of, you know, you need to invest in this. Invest, 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 invest. In this and this and this and this. I had a pal of mine who tried to invest. There was this investment talk. And he invested a lot of money in one single thing. And he lost everything. Because that is not what God had called him to. What has God called you to in your life? You need to know what should I start letting go of? Elijah had to let go of these responsibilities. He had to let go of these things that God had never called him to. He had to let go of the power that he was holding. He had to let it go so that he could get out of the cave. As you're getting out of your cave this month and this year, what are some of those things that you just need to let go and say, you know what, God, have this. Have this. I am letting this go off you, off my plate. And his illustration is given of how when you take a, a battery, battery, and we, when we were boy, well, we, when we were young boys, we used to do this a lot. You take a battery and you take a bulb and you, you just try to light it and you see how, you know, boys, you've done this. Eh? Battery, wires, and you put a light. And when you put one bulb, one bulb, the light is so bright. When you put five bulbs in the same battery what happens the light starts going down and it starts becoming dim and dim and dim when you put 10 bulbs what happens it becomes completely dim and that is how our life is we have taken on so many things and the light that we should be producing has gone dim because you are found in this you are found in this you are found in this when something is happening you are there when what is happening there, you are there. In your relationships, you have not learned to say no. And your light is slowly becoming dim. The joy that you have is slowly going away. Because you have not learned to say no. You have not learned to let go. There are things that God is calling you to start letting go of today in Jesus' name. There are things that we must let go of. There are relationships that keep on bringing us down. They discourage us. They are friendships that every time you hang out with this person, there is nothing good that comes out of it. You come out discouraged. You come out defeated. These are relationships that we have to let go of because they are not making us thrive in the calling that God has called us to. What are some of the things that God has called you into? What are some of the ministries that God has called you into? What is your primary calling, if I may ask? Have you ever sat down and asked God, God, what have you called me to? And what are some of the things that I need to start letting go? Because these things, you did not call me to handle them. What are these things that I need to start saying, hey, no. Thank you, but no. I cannot be in that kind of a place. I cannot hang out with those kind of people. I cannot have those kinds of conversation. I cannot take on that responsibility. I cannot have that kind of a life because this is my calling. Because my calling does not agree with those things. Because what I've been called into does not agree. One of the things that I am very strong on is something called alcohol. Personally, I have no problem with people taking alcohol. I don't. But I can never, I can never do it. I have never and I can never do it. 
it's a my calling does not allow me to live that kind of a life my calling does not allow me to consume alcohol it doesn't that is me what is your calling what has god called you to do and what are some of those things that you have to let go of today because that is where we define who we are elijah while exiting the cave had to let go of some responsibilities he had to let go of things that were weighing him down he had to let go of things that made him feel defeated this powerful man of god was in a cave somewhere and he was ready to die he asked god please take my life take my life right now that i might not live after doing all these great things this guy wanted god to take his life i don't know what your cv is but if you do not define your boundaries today slowly by slowly the light will continue to dim slowly by slowly the light will continue to fade you might say hey right now things are good i can juggle all these balls but it's only a matter of time elijah continued doing all these things juggling all these balls until he got to a place and he could not do it anymore and he asked god god take my life i am ready to call it quits it does not have to get to that place we have to rediscover our boundaries today we have to ask god god what are some of the things that i have to let go of because they do not agree with what you've called me to what are some of those relationships some of those friends that i have to let go of because this new journey that i have begun we cannot meet anymore they are not building me anymore what are some of those things that you engaged in what are some of those habits that you have to let go of because of the calling that god has called you into your light would be so bright right now you would be great you would be amazing you'd be doing mighty things for god if only you would minimize on the number of bulbs in your life if only you would minimize on the number of bulbs in your life what are some of those things that you need to let go of what are some of those things that you need to let go of this week i kept on battling with that question in my life i was like god there there, there has to be something that is making me stuck there has to be something that is making me not fulfill not live out the way you want me to live there has to be something and what are those things god reveal those things to me today some of those things you will need god because some of those poisonous relationships we actually don't know they are we think ah oh, these people are like the best there's no one else like them and yet those relationships are the ones that are derailing us we need to ask god what are some of the things that i need to let go let's bow our heads this morning i want to give you an opportunity and a time to just go before god and search your heart and search yourself and search your mind and everything that is within you and just search and ask god god what have you called me into what is my calling if you can you can write it down somewhere so that you don't forget what are some of those things that god has called you into what are some of the things that you have called me into what are some of the responsibilities that you have called me into what is my primary calling what things do i need to say no to what things do i need to say no to what things do i need to say yes to what are some of the things that i need to let go what are some of the things that i need to stop doing now that i have come of faith now that i have started living this kind of life that is christian this kind of life that is godly what are some of those relationships 
that I need to give up? What are those habits? Elijah had to let go of some things. And God is calling us to let go. There are roles and responsibilities that we are carrying that God never called us to. He's asking us to let go. There are people in our lives that we've been trying to control and God is asking us to let them go. God is asking us to surrender these people to him. God is calling us to a life of surrender. Come on, just take a minute and speak to God and ask God, what am I letting go of today? What am I letting go of, Jesus? What am I saying no to today? As I leave this place, what are those things that I need your help to say no to? There are things that you cannot say no to with your own strength. You need God to give you strength. You need God to walk with you to say no to them. Lord Jesus, we worship you this morning. Our hearts, Lord, are bowed before you. Some of us, Lord, we have been living in a cave. We have been stuck, Lord. We have been living a life, Lord, that you never called us into. Thank you for your word, Lord, your timely word that came, Lord, to rebuke us out of the cave into our calling. Out of our cave into our calling. And so this morning, Lord, we want to take the steps towards our calling. We want to rediscover our boundaries. May you help us to say no to a lifestyle that does not please you. May you help us to say no to habits that do not please you. May you help us, Lord, to say no to these things, Lord, that keep on dragging us and pulling us aside from our calling. Lord, those of us in our, who have determined in our hearts to let go of things, we pray today that, Lord, let it, we know that it is not by might, not by power, but it is by your Spirit. We pray that your Spirit will quicken us to let go of these things in Jesus' name. Some of us, Lord, we are weak. We cannot do it with our own strength. Lord, may you give us strength in Jesus' name. That we will live in our calling. That our lives, Lord, will be pleasing before you. That our lives will be characterized with the presence of God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, may you help us to discover what you've called us into. May you help us to discover what our calling is that as we walk out of the cave this month as we walk out of our cave lord you will usher us right into our calling in the name of jesus that our bulbs will shine bright yes lord we accept your word today we receive it lord may we wrestle with it let our hearts not find any peace until we answer these questions. For you are our God. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.